Woke up early this morning with a smile on my face. Thought you were next to me, but then I see you walking away. My name's Amira.
would like you to appreciate the dance of our life. Please put your hands together for her. Okay, um, she shall be talking about herself, but I will have to do my own first. You know, the popular say, ladies first, it doesn't work when you have a dog in front of the house. The lady will first of all push the man. So because the people here are looking ready for this action and I have to stand for her and go to the ground. Okay, like I was trying to introduce myself, I am Christopher Morris, um, popularly called Adebo Wale in my neighborhood where I was born. And um, I happen to grow around this environment, nursery school, primary, I went to Umi Nostra Primary School, I attended Ladi Kupo Primary School, Kyoja. You see the way it sounded, you know, I'm a typical Ajegoda boy. Then I proceeded to Garcia College, Kadoso, Kadi, and Jora, and my Okay, when I finished my secondary school, but they told me, come on, you have a travel map by the side, go and look for your father's land. Then I went to the East, I went to University of Nigeria, in Suda. Hold on a second, before I went to University of Nigeria, I went to Unifex. Of Africa, I did my diploma in public administration. Then, when I finished that, and I said, okay, time for first degree, I went to the University of Nigeria and I studied something nobody would believe here. Can anybody guess? Somebody said chef. I wish you could say All right, the quick one I studied fine and applied arts from the University of Nigeria here and majored in graphics. So, when I finished that, I've done a couple of trainings, I've learned a lot with my company that is blessing me with this microphone, Tech Africa. We've done stuff on the island, so we came back, we said we need to come back to Ajibule and start a change project. That is why I'm the creative director of Tech Africa today. But having said my story, this lady here, without her, no chef of the mainland. She was the one that invited Bank Africa to partner with her company, Yam. You don't hear them like that before. Company, they get Yam. But before we do that, please put your hands together for the CEO of Young Ajiva's Mind. Please put your hands together. Thank you, everybody. You are very much welcome to this week's project today. My name is Ms. Julia Zoboli. Thank you. 
Turko yu hama ni ela la vi Mr. Olani Ujiboti
successful fashion designers as we are leaving the school, probably this year, and maybe next year. The key to beating competition and achieving success is mental reflected in one's attitude. And you must understand this, that attitude is one of the key factors in personality development. If you have the wrong attitude to what you are doing, definitely it's going to affect the kind of person you have. Total control by the leader requires a low cash. Sometimes, if you don't develop your health fully, some people they don't develop themselves, they are looking for cash. But you need to develop yourself before you start talking about what? Cash. This so true in most human endeavor, besides business, in any areas of human endeavor, you must have what we call right attitude. This type of attitude that people can put you in the right mindset for achieving your business success. And one of these tips is have passion for your business. What I say, have passion for your passion for what you are doing. Yes. But that is the first question. Like I used to tell my students when you come to the school, do they force you to come to this school? Or just tell them, oh, I want to be a caterer. I want to be a fashion designer. I want to know all these things. Because your work, you are nowhere to achieve anything. Your passion will help you overcome difficult moments and persuade people to work for you and want to do business with you. Like, spending two years in this vocational school is not an easy thing. Is it? No. Yeah, you require hard work, kind of tension, but because of your right attitude, you have fun for this business. It's going to help you a lot in achieving success. Two. Sometimes in the school, teachers find it difficult to trust one student or the other. And if a teacher cannot trust you, I beg you, and I beg you, anywhere you go, people will find it hard to do what to trust you. And when you cannot trust you, what will happen to your business? You say you just, just collapse. Three, be flexible and self with God values. Is you know, you're not going to go one way traffic. You have to look at the trend, the markets, and have that meet up. However, no matter how your core value is, no matter the pressure for immediate profit, do not compromise your core values. I will explain this. Some people will come to you, say, do okay for me. Who did this? 
it's good in this I mean, Can you give me your card? Can you give me your card? By the time you know it, you are selling yourself. Please, your core values should be integrity, hard work, doing things. And whenever you are baking any cake, don't bake like you are not going to bake tomorrow. You know the meaning of that. And you put all your efforts to make sure that this one is for today. Tomorrow, we're we'll talking about that one later. For don't let fear or failure hold you back. Please, failure is not a disease. Failure is an opportunity to learn. To learn. And when you try something that doesn't work, what do you do? Evaluate yourself, go back to it again, and make sure you do something better next time. Make timely decision. Don't always say, I will do it uh, tomorrow. Sometimes, when you get a you always talk, tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. Since the major company asset is you, the company is a name, but the person behind the company is what? Is you. By the time you develop yourself, your company will grow. Seven, keep your ego under control. What do you mean by this? One must just say, we will do your anger too much. We never even know anything. Some say, oh, come and look at that game. That one, what oh, like, am I going to do there? My own? No. You go out, be humble. But when you are humble, you know, this ego is some, some people, they are always bragging. Uh, what they said in the Fiji language, the best way to ever go another papa, far. My ego don't say, papa, far, my ego was, my ego biggest. What we mean by this is that, Ultimately, number eight, believe in yourself. So people, they, are, they have what you call inferiority complex. Mind you, pride is not associated with what superiority complex. How do you understand? When you say that, you have what you call superiority complex, it doesn't mean that you are, uh, what? You are proud, you are arrogant, it doesn't mean. But it means that, yes, I know what I am doing and I am ready to learn more. But believe in yourself, because, and if you know that, that is going to help you. But anything you are going to do is going to say, I am doing this for my better future. Encourage and accept criticism graciously and admit your mistake. That's number nine. Encourage and accept what? Criticism. When somebody comes to do this case, uh, you know you are running like this, don't say, eh, what if you are I will understand. It's okay, thank you, man. I will take a correction. Remember, you are not 100% correct. You are bound to make a mistake. But stay the strong uh, work ethic. They say leadership by words, by example. Don't say because I have become madam. Don't sit on a chair giving command. Eh? You always be there with them. Be by example. Make sure that everything is uh, alright. But if those provide the business well, but some people have this lazy attitude right from base. And they carry on with their life. And they say, a lazy man can never be successful in life. Maybe just to round up. Rebound quickly from sex back. There surely be plenty of up and downs as you build the business. Learn from the setback and move on. You can't change the past. What do you mean by this? Maybe you are doing your business. Don't expect that life is full of words, roses, cake, and honey. They are going to go up and down in their life. And sometimes, what, whatever you have done in the past, uh, as long as I've been a cake cut 10 years ago, as long as your past is your past. Today is a new beginning. But sometimes when you want to do something, ah, oh my God, it's not because of this, uh, it's not because of my auntie, it's not because of my father, it's not because of us that sitting there. Tell us that my past is my past. Do you believe that? Yes. Your past is your past. You are starting a new. The future is in your hands. Theoretically, get out of your comfort zone to do something important. Like this competition, you know what they call comfort zone? Huh? You know what I'm about, like, say, like imagine students, they always feel like there's no need of going out. This is my school, let me sit down. Say, child, say, going to say, ah, that's good, I beg. Say, much. you need to go out. But if you go out, you do what? You learn. Like today, now, are you not learning? Yeah. I'm telling you, what I'm going to learn today, you may not even learn in the classroom. And that is how it's supposed to be. Don't always 
sit at your comfort uh, zone. You are a catcher in Amukoku. If there is a wedding in uh, Victoria, what do you do? Go there. Go and watch the way they are growing things. It is your attitude, not your aptitude, that will determine your success. Listen again. It is your attitude, not your words, aptitude, that will determine your success. Your attitude to work. Positive attitude. It is preferable to work with someone who is less talented and has a good uh, attitude. If you have a good talent and you have a good attitude, you cannot succeed. So please, all can be learned except passion. Take time out of your head and do to periodically reflect on these attributes. You may be inspired to act. Sometimes sit down, look at yourself. Am I having a positive attitude? I think it's correcting me. And when you say yourself, say behind me so that you can move uh, forward. With a good attributes, you will be a successful caterer, you will be a successful fashion designer, and anything you want to do in life. Thank you. To the microphone, the principal, the instructor, chief instructor of one of the finest catering institutions in Nigeria. Put your hands together for Ms. Basi. So be a good, successful entrepreneur on caterer and fashion. That is, as a good caterer and as a good fashion designer, how would you dress to your place of work? How would you dress to meet your clients? How would you dress when you have a contract to stand before the audience in a good reception and explain your cake? How would you dress to meet people out there? But before I start, I want to tell us what personality is. Sir, it is the various aspects of a person's character that are combined to make them different from other people. That is, personality is an aspect of a person's character that are combined to make them different from other people. That is, things that make you different from that person that did not even learn that thing. That is what personality is all about. Let me take for example, Mr. Ralph happens to be the man among all women. And he has a good personality. That is why whatever we do, we ask him to go first because he is the man among us. Without that, you can't say he's not a good person. He's a good person. Then another personality says it is the quality of a person's character that makes them interesting and attractive. That is, in our churches, in meetings, there are sometimes people are called upon to end in society. It is the personality of that person. That is why that person is chosen as the chairman or the president. You know, in every society in the church, if a chairman is not able to handle the position, would he or she be chosen? So that is a personality or his personality that makes him or her to be choosing to aid in society. There we have another definition of personality. It says it talks a lot about the qualities of places, things that make it interesting and different. Like when Mr. Rav was saying, he said going out is what? Very important. I remember I went to mark an examination in St. Charles. There is a student there that we were called there. She asked me, where am I from? I said, I'm from St. Teresa's Marine Beach. She said, ha, huh, I've never heard of there. I don't even know there. I was forced to ask her, where are you living? She said she lives in Festac. She only knows the, tra the buses that she entered to St. Charles. And then from that bus, she goes back to Festa. She doesn't know any other place. And I told her, it is very good you go out. Even when you close, you can just take one hour, one 
background, even some of us live in a particular environment. Let's take, for example, this place. This is in Lugo Street, right? Yes. Most of us come to this school from our home. How many of us are finding pleasure in going out to see what are the street's names surrounding in Lugo Street? How many of us? That is the thing. We only stay one place, stagnant in one place. We don't go out. We don't go out. I always tell my students, if you have occasion, if there is any occasion in Victoria Island, go. Learn things. You can't stay one place. It's not everything that we teach in the school. There are some places when you go out, that is where you learn. How many of us know Silver Bell Ballaria? Imagine all the crowd here. Yeah, look at how many people are straight up. That is how it is. You don't just stay one place. Go out. See buildings. We only stay at Ajekula in Amukoko. In, in uh, Mba Street. When you go out, you see places. You see buildings that are very Then now we come to personality on our dress code as caterer or fashion designer. We said, as a good caterer or fashion designer, you must have the knowledge of dress sense. Dress sense. Dress sense means idea of how to dress well. And dressing well involves three things. One, the color of your material. Two, the material texture. And then three, the style you use this material to sew. Most of us have good materials, but we don't sew what? Good styles. Sometimes you might see somebody, you will see you will see Immaculate. Can Immaculate stand up? Let's see. Immaculate from St. Davis. I want to differentiate something. Immaculate, please stand up. Eh? <laughs> Thank you. Sit down. <laughs> then you will see Mary and Jose from St. Davis. Please stand up. And sit down. Thank you. Are they of the same size? No. You will see Mary wearing a dress. Very beautiful on her. The style is so admiring. Because Immaculate loves that style, she will ask a tailor to sew it for her. And when she sizes it, she notices that it's not as fitted as that of Mary. Will she be happy with the tailor? No. But it's her own body. It's not everything that Mr. A does that Mr. B wants to do. Do what is your own. Because every one of us are unique in our own ways. So you don't do what Mr. A is doing. Like you are having a contract now. As a caterer, you have a contract, a wedding contract. And you know when you bake your cake, you must surely come out to explain it. Either one or two things you have to say. Some of us feel very shy to come outside. I don't know why. Then you dress very well. But when you came to the occasion, you got to note that there are some people that are dressed more than you. You feel very shy to come out. But what you have to know is that you are dressed for that occasion. And you believe you are okay. When you are called upon, come out. Don't look at the faces of the audience. Look at where they are head. Look above them. Then you will come out and do well. But if you have already got that hill feelings in you that because you are not dressing well, people will not admire you or what you are saying. You come out and then as you are coming out, especially when you wear a high heel shoe. I don't know, there is one kind of heel that is really loud. Wear cake, Jabi. <laughs> and you want to come and explain cake. And you want a wear cake shoe. And already you are tense. And as you are coming out, you are 
you are walking, all of a sudden your leg slips. What would you say? You will feel tensed very well. And when you come out, you feel very shy. Just because all eyes were on you when you were coming out. So when you are going out to occasion, make sure you don't wear a gay shoe. Make sure you don't wear gown or long slates that is very slip, that is very long, so that you don't mistakenly step on it. And also, you have a contract business that you have to meet a client somewhere. We are supposed to dress on three pieces suit. That is your skirt or trouser, your blouse. Then if you have a jacket, put it on. You don't need to dress on mini skirts. Skimpy blouse. That is the blouse, forget to sleep, and the blouse that will show your belly button. Oh, you know what is belly button? And then you go out, meet a guest. Will the guest give, sorry, will the clients give you your, con your contracts because you are not dressing well? And then we also talk about your makeups. Some of us, when we are going out, it's because we are in school, that is why we are all dressing very well like this. Some of us, when we are going out, the way we make up, people will turn back and look at you, and you will think they are doing what? Admiring you. They will not, you will not know that they are saying, hmm, look at this person. Yeah? We do it sometimes. Or sometimes you are going to school. You are supposed to be on your school uniform. You are supposed to be on small earrings. No shade to school. And then good sandals. Some of us when we go out to school. We dress anyhow on the way. And we don't know who and who is looking at us. And then when we get to that school then, the principal, the teachers will be talking to us who will not even answer them. We give them deaf ears. Is that right? Then another thing, you are an entrepreneur. A good caterer, thank God you finished and then you became a self-employed person. You have your canteen, where you sell drinks, pepper soup, mkwabi, urban salad, etc. Just because you have male clients, you know it is only male that visit that kind of place. You have male clients and you are going to work that day. You wear a leggings, you wear body on blouse that will show all your curves. You wear bamboo earrings. I believe you know bamboo earrings. And then you put on good, instead of putting on cool color for your makeup, you put on red. Put, have you not seen it before? Put on red lipstick.
God and answers appearance of an individual. We should dress properly to work, to school, to church, or other events. Because it connotes who we are. That is, dressing well tells who you are. And it will make people out there not to judge you wrongly. Dress sense gives you confidence in your business to be a successful caterer and fashion designer. Thank you. Why do you go for the products you go for? Why do you buy them? Because you get a lot of things from them. Because they are unique. Because they are different from the others. And that is why you prefer one product to the other. But before we commence, I want us to know the meaning of products. According to the Microsoft Encounter Dictionary 2009, product is defined as something made or created. Or created by a person, machine, a natural process, especially something that is offered for sale. A product, my dear students, why do you go for the products you go for? Why do you buy them? Because you get a lot of things from them. Because they are unique. Because they are different from the others. And that is why you prefer one product to the other. But before we commence, I want us to know the meaning of product. According to the Microsoft Encounter Dictionary 2009, product is defined as something made or created. Something made or created by a person, machine, a natural process especially something that is offered for sale. In products, look at all the weddings there, something made or created, either through a natural process, a machine or a person. But here we're going to limit this to the things we do. Products here can be services or the goods we produce. For example, we are students of a catering school and there are so many things we produce. Some of those things are, we have the cake, the snacks, we have a lot of clothes, our craft work. Then the services, there are also some services which you render to people. These services are like hall decoration, cooking in an event, in an event. those are the services you offer. Now, a unique selling point of a picture. What is unique? Unique is only one, different from others, in a way that makes some somebody or something special or worthy of note. That is what unique means. Something that makes you special. Something that makes you different from the others. Then, we have selling. What is selling? for money, for a good or a service. When you exchange money for a good or a service, it's known as selling. So here, how is your product your unique selling point? That is what I'm going to talk about. How is your product your unique selling point? How should, why should people leave other caterers for your product? Why should people leave other fashion designers because of you? Why should people leave other event decorators because of your product? We are going to look at that now. There are so many things a customer cares about. Now, the first one is quality. Most people go for quality products. They are not after the quantity. They go for quality. Therefore, whatever you make or whatever you do, you must have that at the back of your mind. Quality. Forget uh, quantity. Whether you make it or not, just have it in mind that what you are produce, producing is of a higher quality. Because if you don't give people 
uh, quality goods, they will come to you. True or false? <laughs> Why do you think people leave? Uh, I don't want to mention any brand. Now, the second is satisfaction. Is your goods or service able to pro provide satisfaction to your customers? You have to provide satisfaction. You have to make sure that your clients are satisfied with the goods you produce or the services you render to them. If they are not satisfied, I tell you, they won't come again. They will go to other places. And I hope you are aware that they are a thousand and one. There are so many caterers. There are so many caterers. So you have to make your goods or your service distinct from the others. You have to make your goods. You have to be very. You have to make your clients get satisfaction, whatever from whatever you produce. Then the third one is value for your money. You buy the goods you buy because you get value for your money. If you don't get value, will you continue with those goods? No, you will not. If I buy a good and I'm not satisfied, I won't go to that good again. I'll go to another one because there are so many others. They are substitutes. They call them substitutes in the market. There are a lot of substitutes. All goods have substitutes. There's no good that has a body There are a lot of substitutes. So if I don't get value for my money, I go to another good that will provide that for me. Then, let's look at prompt services. Some people are not writing. Prompt services. Are you able to deliver at the time you are asked to deliver? Or do you... You should be able to deliver. When you are asked to deliver, you should be able to deliver. You should not disappoint your client. Because once you disappoint them, they won't come back to you. True or false? You should provide prompt services. Then finally, is your packaging. That is branding. How do you brand your products? How do you brand your products to make your products different from the others? You should also know how you brand your products so that people will prefer your own products to the others. My dear students, I want to tell you that there are a lot of competition in the market. There is what they call survival of the fittest. If you are not able to survive, you will be thrown out of the market. If you are not able to face competition, you will be thrown out of the market. You will be nowhere. So, competition makes you to sit up. It makes you to sit up because if you relax, you will not grow. You have to move along with the trend. Education continues. You keep learning every day. You should not be satisfied with what you are taught in the school. You should continue sourcing for knowledge. You stop learning the day you die. So you should keep learning. Don't say, I have graduated, for I have spent two years, therefore I know everything. You don't. Even myself, I still go for trainings. So you should not be satisfied. You should try to move ahead. So I want you now to help you to make your products unique. You have to develop something they call USP. It's called unique selling prepositions. Unique selling prepositions. These unique selling prepositions are the things that would help you to make your products move ahead. So you have to develop unique your unique selling preposition. Create a motto for yourself. If you look around now, all these products here, they have a motto. You have to create your own motto and make sure that you meet up with your motto. There are other unique selling points like the price, the place, your promotion, and your personality. But I want to tell you that your product is the most important. Many people might not know where you are. Many people might not know you in person. But your product speaks a lot about you. True or false? So you have to take care. Sorry, I have to introduce myself again. I'm Mrs. Peace. 
in quoting as my neighbor. Thank you, God, for a little bit of uh, talk. And um, right, we are actually here to go and get into action. Uh, it's a competition, fine, but not really, not really such that one should panic about. It's such that we actually want to see, okay, how this youth, how far they have learned in the catering school. We have some criteria written down. Of course, okay, I should say is an impartial judgment thing. Because for me, I've actually not been to any of these catering schools. I don't even know a single person here, except the person who invited me. So you're going to get a very fair judgment. And um, we are going to take them through this way. I have to just mention it to the girls so they can a general point for us. Looking at the pre-preparation, we are going to look at the high timing, then presentation. When we are talking about presentation, we are going to look at the table setting, the garnishing, how you are able to present this after cooking. Then still, now we are going to the main dishes as they are being presented. We are going to look at the appearance, we are still going to look at the aroma, the taste, and texture. Do we get this straight? So, as you walk, you are going to bear this in mind and be able to walk in accordance to what this is, so you will be able to attain. Just like I have said, it's not such that you walk and you panic about, no. You don't win today, you will win next time. Do we get it? Yeah. But it can be you next time. So there's nothing about pressure. Now we are going to, I think it's going to be done uh, in such a way that the, the person giving the talk will be giving the talk while we walk in the kitchen to so save time. So we are going to have the girls go to the table. Part of the process, every time, every now, and then we give out information of how far we're dealing with the schools and the brand is represented. What's is the brand West African Seasoning Company, owners of Madish and Ajinomoto. And we'll be having a brand product briefing for like a few minutes so that you can give us some key on how to use this thing called Madish and Ajinomoto. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Father. Good afternoon, my distinguished members of this very extinct table. And our teachers, you have done very well, thank you. We have seen your work, we are already seeing it, and we will taste your work. There, but we need to taste. And my beloved students, good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here today. My name is Francisca Ikediash. I do corporate communication, and we have decided to be part of this project because we are a food company. We are a family company. We cannot see where food is happening and we are away from it. Because right now you already do the cooking in your homes. And so we are glad to be here. The name of my company is West African Seasoning Company. We are the makers of Ajinomoto and Madish. Ajinomoto, Ajinomoto, how much do you know about Ajinomoto? If I ask us now, what do you know about Ajinomoto? But can I see our hands if you have heard it? Inside it, how Ajinomoto is made. It is made from sugar cane. It's made from sugar cane molasses through a natural process of fermentation. We know the process of fermentation. How you get your ogi, right? Mm. And curry. You ferment it. That's how the sugar cane, after you, you see how we try to do it in picture so that it can be very well explained. The first process is you have a sugar cane, you take it to the factory where the juice is extracted, and then it's through the process of fermentation, which our uh, popular iru and gadawa, all of it goes through that process too. During the process of fermentation, 
distribution, it is um, heated, and then it is separated, and the final product is Ajinomoto. So if they ask you, what is Ajinomoto made from? We should all know, it's made from sugar cane. So if it is made from sugar cane, I don't think I should be telling us any other thing. That also accounts for why you get that taste from meat. And so if I should ask us, this Ajinomoto, do you know when it started? Do you know when it came? When? Oh, you have spied. Good to see that. I like that kind of spying. Please, you have won yourself a beautiful shopping bag for that answer. Professor Kikunani Ikeda. A Japanese scientist. Professor Kikunani Ikeda. He went to study in Germany. And when he got there, he noticed that these people, they were growing, you know, if you know Germans, they are really very stout, they are hard. And he put the seafood behind there. The boy prepared something one day, and one of those things striking, he said, what is this you cooked? The boy said, this is normal thing I cooked before, like combo soup, combo plants. He said, no, there's something about this, there's something about this one. He said, this I get from the German food. I'm getting it here, I'm getting it here. That is how the research started, and Ajinomoto was born. He actually sold the patent to the Ajinomoto company, who began to market it. And so, it is very safe, the essence of taste. That's the meaning of Ajinomoto. It's not a Yoruba word. It's not Igbo. It's not Aosa. Because some people will say Ajinomoto, Ajinomoto, it's moto, moto ni, moto ni. It's not moto. It's not English, it's Japanese. So you have known the meaning today. The essence of taste. If I ask us how many taste sets do we have? If you taste something, how many will you say you have what we have? Five. 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 Five
there's onion flavor. So this is from selected natural ingredients. We have three types of varieties of madish. There's soup, there's stew, and there's classic. Soup, stew, and classic. Soup, as the name says, is for your soups. Put it in your Afghan soup, Ekusi soup.
they have a problem with Lambda some time ago. So it shows that sometimes a place can look clean, but it's not exactly high. Then the food itself that we are making, we have to make sure that the food is clean from the process of preparing the food to the process of serving the food. All the stages in between have to be clean. Then last, uh, last is your environment. Your environment also has to be clean. If you are clean yourself, you are making sure that your food is being uh, cleaned and cooked in an, an hygienic place. And the place where you are cooking it is dead, then you have not achieved anything. So what did I say? I said in three ways. Let's go through it again. You as an individual, so we are talking about personal hygiene, the food hygiene, and the environment hygiene, the environmental hygiene. So can we go through that again? First is what? Father, he said, for you to know a clean 
woman, which is a clean woman, you begin with her kitchen. You begin with her kitchen. You know some of the women, you see how dirty they are. And they come, they just make things so untidy, so unkept. And you don't even know where to even put your leg, they're really there. And if it's also that's in that kitchen, hello? 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 Let me speak myself again. My own father taught me is that when we are, when you want to know a clean woman, it's through her kitchen. My dear sisters, my dear friends, we want you to be the best. And how can you keep your homes? Many homes are divided today. Because of what? The lack of a woman to cook do food. A man will come to my office and say, Father, I don't feel like marrying this woman any longer because this woman doesn't know how to cook. She does not know how to cook. But I keep telling them that one of the things you can do for your wife is also encourage her. We send her to something like this that we have here, the Women Drinking Center, where they learn how to cook. Sometimes our parents do not really teach us. Maybe because sometimes we feel lazy to do some house chores. And so our parents leave us like that, and we grow like that, and we get into marriage. And if some of you observe King, we have a communicated with this one since our sister has been talking. I've been dealing with the issue of marriage. Issue of marriage. And it begins with something like this. If your sister does not take this particular training, maybe if somebody is sponsoring you, I just take it for granted and you just go in there. When you get into a, a, a man's house and you don't have to please your husband, then your husband will kick you out. It's as simple as that. And that is the only way you get your husband eating without eating, eating around one's food. And when you when he comes back home and you present your food, you just squeeze his face and say, Look, I'm not interested, I'm tired of eating. And if it, 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 it leads to what? You break it up your marriage. So the best way, one of the ways to cap capture your husband is what? Cook well for him. Cook well.